All right. Let me weigh in on this. Um, so as he alluded to, it shocked some people and it shocked their conscience, the the lack of a stoppage by Herb Dean at uh, UFC Moscow. This was in the C.B. Dalloway fight, and the other gentleman's name is, uh, forgive my pronunciation, uh, Murtaz Aliyev. Um, he was an M1 champion. I didn't know a whole lot about him. He looked pretty good, and it was a uh, it was a nice performance by him, especially taking the fight on late notice and everything else involved. So uh, he did his job, right? They tell you, keep striking until the referee pulls you off. Now, we've had Herb on the show. I believe we had him a couple of weeks ago. Let me say it up front. I like Herb Dean a lot uh, as a person. I do think, generally speaking, he is a competent official. Remember, he doesn't just perform these functions. He also has his own training academy where he's training the next generation of referees and officiants to do their uh, various jobs. So he's somewhat of a leader in that community. And I believe that whenever a situation like this happens in MMA, it is always inevitable that people get right to character assassination. You go back to the Yamasaki lack of involvement in Valentina Shevchenko and Priscilla Cachuera, and everyone was out there saying, oh my God, it was a terrible stoppage, which it, or non-stoppage, or whatever you want to call it, super late one. But then it turned in, it metastasized into this thing about who Yamasaki is or isn't, how he's a man of ill repute. And none of those things were really very fair. If you want to criticize either his body of work or that particular call, I really had no problem with that. In fact, I agree with just about all of it. But what really kind of bothered me was when they went after him as a person. I got to tell you, as a guy in Washington, D.C., where he has developed all of his academies, or most of them anyway, uh, what that what he and his brother have done for jiu-jitsu, for MMA, uh, for people's lives should not be understated. This is not a guy who is involved in crimes and bad behavior. He's a married father. Um, and 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 so if you're going to really be serious about a character evaluation, it's really not an argument you can have. Neither here nor there. I'm not going to get into the character assassination of Herb Dean, although I've seen some of that out there. But one needn't do that to really call the stoppage. Now, why do I think that stoppage was bad? Pretty simply, C.B. Dalloway stopped competing. It is true that, again, uh, Murta Zaliev was landing a lot of shots on the blocked face and arms. Like his hands were up and the punches were like hitting the top of his hands or hitting on the forearm. Fair enough, some of them weren't getting through. But he was also C.B. Dalloway just laying there. He was looking to be saved. And I don't say that to impugn his character. I say that because his character, we know what kind of a competitor he is. We know what he's done in the octagon. That is a natural human response for somebody who's been put through that kind of stress, both in that particular contest and in a cumulative sense. It, some guys just don't don't want it anymore in a particular fight, and that's okay. And he didn't. And I got to tell you, it really got bad for me when he was laying on his side. But there's a moment about 22 seconds left in the round where he then goes belly down and is just covering up. Folks, that is not intelligent defense. It's okay to cover up at first if you're hurting, but eventually you have to move. Eventually you have to do something. And if you're just covering up over this prolonged period – I don't know how anybody on this planet could call that intelligent defense. And that was a problem for me because then the fight continued for 22 more seconds. Basically, CB had to take the fight into his own hands in between rounds and just either he couldn't get up or didn't want to get up, whatever it was, it was the right thing to do. That fight should not have gone on. And yes, you can make an argument about the where was his corner. I agree. They didn't do him any favors a whole lot either. There's a lot of people who are complicit here. But let me start, if I can, beyond this preamble with a word. The word of the day, the word of the day here on the weigh-in, on the MMA Hour, on this 17th of September 2018 is Omerta. Do you guys know what Omerta is? Yes, I think it's a song by Lamb of God, but that's not what it is. Uh, by its technical definition, Omerta is the code of silence that members of a crime family will use to basically not snitch on each other. Now, I don't mean to borrow the word in its literal terms. I'm taking a sanitized version of that. But in MMA, we have way too much omerta. And here's what I mean by that. If you would like to go through Herb's resume and find various shortcomings, it's not necessarily difficult. I have made a list. This is hardly exhaustive, but just a few to note. In the Henan Barral versus Uriah Faber fight, Uriah had a thumbs up. Herb later admitted he didn't see it. Stop the fight. Uriah appeared to be fine. In the Sarah McMahon versus Ronda Rousey fight, McMahon got dropped. He called it, even though she appeared to be able to continue. In Alvarez Poirier won. He called it a no contest, which a lot of people didn't agree with. He later explained himself, but 
at least it was controversial at the time, given all the various considerations. Cerrone versus Masvidal, he actually kind of intervened before the horn even went in the first round. And C.B. Dalloway versus Khalid, uh, again, uh, Murtazaliev. Uh, we all know the story there. There's a couple other ones. How about Rockhold versus Weidman? Let that one go almost a minute too long, in my judgment. And Rockhold took a lot of abuse as a, excuse me, Weidman took a lot of abuse as a consequence. And you guys may not remember this one. Here's another one that really sticks out to me. Uh, Pete Spratt versus Ryan Ford. Now, it was loud where he was. Herb Dean couldn't hear the bell. The round extended for another five seconds, and Pete Spratt took unanswered shots from Ryan Ford, he, and the fight went to the next round, and then he eventually lost. He was super upset about it, and the tape is not very exonerating. But here's the truth about Herb's resume. You don't know about all the good calls he's made because those don't make the headlines. I agree that all of these are not great, or at least some of them are very much not great, but if you really wanted to, for the most part, you could play that game with anybody. You could play that game with Big John McCarthy. You can find all the times he didn't have a great day or a great event. You can play that game with Dan Mergliata. You can play that game with Leon Roberts. You can play that game to a lesser extent, but if you really wanted to, you could play that game with Mark Goddard. You could play that game with Jason Herzog. You could play that game with a lot of people. They're not perfect. Nobody is in any occupation anywhere. Right? They're going to have bad calls, and documenting them is important, but having a little perspective is as well. Now, if it sounds like I'm exonerating Herb, I'm not. Here's what I am saying, going back to the original word about Omerta. Have you noticed there has been no official response by anyone about this? Have you noticed that there are no other referees willing to speak on the record? Have you noticed the UFC hasn't said anything? Now, maybe they've done something privately. Maybe the commission involved here. I don't know who it even would be, UFC or Russia's, whatever the case may be. Maybe they've said something, but we don't really know about it. My major objection is that you can ask a series of questions about this. Not so much the stoppage itself, which appears to be quite bad, but about somebody's record. Because I saw folks saying, well, is this lack of a stoppage disqualifying? And Herb's been on the downswing since 2014. Do we really know that? It might actually be true, but do we really know that? Do commissions keep report cards? When something goes bad, do they actually say anything to them? Do the commissions talk to each other about the referees? We don't know any of these things. And every time I try to reach out to a commission member or get another referee to speak about something, almost universally, it is silence. Silence. Every time. Every time. That doesn't mean that people aren't well-intentioned. That doesn't mean there isn't something happening behind the scenes. It just means we are totally left in the dark because of this code of silence. And it doesn't just affect referees, and it doesn't just affect commission members. It is a problem in MMA generally. MMA has an omerta problem. Fact. Fact. Do you know how much news doesn't get reported because people don't want to talk on the record or even talk to you at all? When Donald Cerrone came out with that accusation about the puppy mill and Jackson Wink, trust me, there was a bunch of journalists who knew about that a long time ago, and it never got published. And every time I tried to look into it, silence. Omerta. One more time. How on earth can it be that we say refereeing is so important that these guys are out here looking after the safety of these fighters? They're that line of defense. You can't have a fight without someone being there. And then at the same time, there's no accountability at all in the public sphere whatsoever. None. There's no transparency about any of this. You know, you talk about this with athletic commission members, and sometimes off the record what they'll tell you is, well, I don't want to throw the referee under the bus. Well, what is the fighter who got wronged in Title II here? And frankly, what is the public owed? Maybe we're not owed everything. Maybe we're only owed a little bit. But I don't even know how much that is. Because it differs from commission to commission. It differs from person running the commission to person running the commission. It differs on what their philosophies might be. It differs on the offense. It differs on so many things. And I get that refereeing is a volunteer army, man. It, it, it is who comes in that door. And it's not for a lot of money. And it sure as hell ain't for a lot of thanks which is why I think some measure of being calm about this, at least uh, Herb's 
particular act in the larger measurement of his resume is important. He's got a gazillion good calls, and he's got some bad ones. What does that mean? We should have some perspective about that. But the fact that you can never call up anyone and get a freaking answer to anything is why, whether it's Herb Dean or Yamasaki or anybody else, this shit is going to continue. It is going to continue because the power structure in place will guarantee it. It will guarantee it. It's not going anywhere. You want to get rid of Herb Dean? Who are you going to put in that's going to make do a better job? Maybe there's somebody. My hunch is it's probably would make things worse. That's my hunch. Why do you think you see Mark Goddard at all these events and Dan Mergliata at all these events and previously Big John, but of course now he's with Bellator or Herb Dean at all these events? Because when you take those guys away, the level of refereeing, not totally. I think Jason Herzog's a very good referee and some other good ones as well. But by and large, it just collapses. The quality collapses. So is that the answer? Is that why they get all the refereeing assignments? Is that why there may not be any consequence for this? Is that why we'll probably see Herb either in Brazil or some other event? I, I, I can only speculate because no one ever talks on the record. And that's true for officiating. That's true for many, many fighters. That's true for many, many managers, except when it comes to things like, oh, my client's got a fight coming up. That's why that's the most prominent form of news, because that's the only thing they'll share. We have a serious, serious Omerta problem. I am not asking for people to drop dimes on other people unless it's truly warranted. What I'm saying is we need to have more adult conversations. We have almost none of them inside MMA. They're almost not a thing. Because either trash talk is part of a fight, but then it's not really real, and that gets turned into like what criticism is. So if you actually try to make adult criticism, it ends up being treated as slander or something. And so all you end up getting is nonsense praise or phony hype for a fight and nothing in between. And when you try to talk to commission members, silence. When you try to talk to various high-ranking officials inside promotions, silence. You try to talk to other referees to just get some perspective, silence. So I'm not here asking you to love Herb Dean stoppage. And if you really believe that there's a meritocratic case for saying he's slipping or he should be replaced, then that's a conversation that I think probably should be had. That seems a little premature to me, but opinions will differ. But here's the point. It is impossible to hold these people accountable because nobody in power, for the most part, not totally, but for the most part, they don't want to do shit about it. They don't have to because they're not accountable to anybody. It's not about Herb or anybody else. It's about that entire structure that's in place that enables this and will continue to enable this and has enabled this because there's no real way to check it except for if a promoter just loses their mind or a fighter request like Daniel Cormier didn't want Herb Dean at UFC 197. They did it anyway, right? Uh, you get the idea. I'm just pointing, or maybe it was 214, whatever it was, because of what he did at 197. As we wrap up here, let me just say this. Um, if you want change in MMA, and you're watching this right now, you have to do something about it. You have to say something on the record. You have to get out there and talk candidly, like an adult, about the problems, even if it means there are consequences about that. That's true if you're an MMA media member, if you're another referee, if you're an officiant, if you are dismayed with the state of things, but then you recognize whenever someone asks you to speak on the record about it and you don't and you just hide behind the power structure because you can, well, then stop complaining because this is just how things are going to be. And I realize for the average fan that may sound all a little bit confusing, but the reality is that there is plenty of change possible but you got to have a little courage to make it happen first.